Welcome to Alaska. Today we're going to go on a really cool trip. We're going to go up the Iditarod Trail and look for a camp spot that I can camp out when the Iditarod sled dog race goes by. And so come along for a super cool trip and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the trail. heading out this morning. Um, it looks like it's early, but realistically it's 9.30 in the morning. And this is my first winter camping trip of the year. Look about it is. This is a good test run for later winter camping trips. Day. From this point forward, days are getting longer every day. And so in a month from now, a guy will be able to go out and spend multiple hours goofing around and seeing gorgeous things, where this early in the season, we don't have much for light. Um, I do have a couple of big winter camping trips coming up that I'm super stoked about. Um, I'm planning on going to the Iron Dog this year and camping out along the trail. And last year I did the Iditarod, which is a phenomenal trip. Um, and I plan on doing the Iditarod again this year. So it's a quarter after 11 now. So we're off the highway now, heading down toward a river and I'll check the ice conditions when we get down there with the local people that live there um, and kind of oversee that. And then if the ice conditions are good, we'll be going up river on a snow machine. As you can see, the sun still hasn't come up. It's about 1140 right now. So, we're gonna start with the machine. I haven't started it for like two months. So I put a brand new battery in it two months ago. Start it up, let it start warming up, start packing up the sled. First thing that I'm going to do is put this tarp down here, obviously. And what that's going to do, I'm going to cover everything up with the tarp, and then I'll cover it up with a net. And it does two things. One, number one, it keeps everything in. And number two, as you're pounding down the trail in this fresh powder, the powder will find its way into every single little crevice. And this way, if you put tarp over it, you don't get so much snow in your stuff. But mainly, it's just to secure the load. When we get done, you'll see what that looks like. So that's my wood stove, and in that box, the stove and the box together weigh just a little over 100 pounds. That'll keep that from jiggling around. And then I'd like to tie this directly to the sled, because if you don't, you'll end up with problems. Just keeps it so that it's not dependent upon anything else to hold it down. And if you put the heavy weight in the back of it, it keeps your sled going straight. If you put all the weight in the front of your sled, then your sled will fishtail back and forth. Into the and so this is a box of wood. I like to 
like to bring my own firewood just because then you don't have to count on finding dry seasoned wood and the warmest wood the wood that puts out the most heat at least is wood that's been seasoned not green stuff and so this has been seasoned for about two years my tent wood usually in one night I'll go through one box of wood but I always like to bring some extra just because when things go bad it's nice to have um, a little spare this is more cooking stuff this is water After I have that, then I have this big bungee that I made. This is like a 10 foot bungee. And it'll just take the shock out of everything. Best that I can tell, I have everything I need. I guess we won't know until we get out there, so we'll go give it a shot and see what happens. So it's hard to tell because this is all flat, but everything that's flat here is river. You can see the river bank here, so it's going to be a deep channel over here. And it's nice to see the people who travel in there because it means that the ice is deep. Um, and then that's a shallow bank there. Um, so we're just going to continue down here for at least 13 miles. Last year I set up for the I Did Rod 13 miles down this trail, so I kind of want to camp there today. But um, we'll take a little bit of a look at the trail as we go along here. you really have to be careful out here is open water so you, for sure you don't want to get into that but then you always have to wonder how deep is it underneath the trail and so I like to not dally when I cross places that I know there's water underneath the trail like that but it also talks about trail conditions in other places as well I mean the guy needs to be careful it's about one o'clock in the afternoon and that's as high as the sun's probably going to get in Saturday and I'll just scooch along there and then set down in a little bit. Um, so we're going to keep going here. Thank you. There's one more back there. This is pretty cool. We're on the Iditarod Trail. And um, just had two dog sleds go by me, and there's another one coming.
Okay, so the sun's starting to go down. I've started to unpack my sled. You can see it going down there. And what we have here is flat light. You really can't see any depth perception of the snow. But what we're going to do is I'm going to run my snow machine back and forth right here and pack that snow down so I have somewhere to put my tent. This snow is at the temperature where it will not pack because it's too cold, so it stays powdery. And so what I've done is my cot, so my cot doesn't sink in, the front of my cot will be on the plywood here, the back of my cot will be here, and then I'll have a walkway down the middle that I'll be able to set my stove on. Otherwise, what always happens is you set your stove down and then the snow melts underneath it and it keeps going down and down and you end up with a disaster. And so this will make a nice platform. Then I'll put my, um, I'll put my footprint on top of this and then I'll have a pretty decent platform to camp on without having to take, without having to bring too much wood or too much stuff out here. So I'll move this back out of the way, put the footprint down now. And I've set my tent up. The sun should rise from down that way, and that way I'll be able to see the sunrise. Actually, I think it rises from over here. Oh well, um, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so to put this rain fly on, that goes on the main pole and then connects to this gizmo. And then there's a pole that goes to each corner here. And so kind of the trick, if there's a trick, is to drive that back toward the tent. I think there's not enough snow to stake this down, but I gotta try to see if I can tap that in a little bit with my hatchet. Yeah, that's hitting frozen ground or frozen ice right there. So, um, we'll hope the wind doesn't come up tonight. Yeah, so what we got here 
is you've got about a foot of powder right on top of the gravel. You can see over here, I dug down with the hatchet. I can find it again right here. And there's gravel bar. And so we'll do the best we can. I'll stake it out with some totes or something a little bit and probably tie some to the sled. And then, um, but in the meantime, I'm going to get that fire going because my hands are cold and I'll be able to warm up nicely that way. So again, this is called nesting stovepipe because it nests inside of itself. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get a fire started. Everybody has their favorite way to start a fire. I'm going to show you my favorite way. Okay, so I put one stick in there and that stick's job really is to keep everything from collapsing. And then I'm going to put some, people will laugh at this. This is dryer lint. I'm going to put some dryer lint in there. And this is a, this is a commercial grade fire starter thing. When it's cold, thick lighters don't work with a hoot. There's a safety match then. Maybe. Doesn't seem very safe, does it? I like that, but it's not doing anything. So I'm gonna cheat and see if I can get just a little bit of flamage off there. Nope. Mercy. Okay. Let's try one of these. So this is another commercial. Huh. Okay, let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, now with that going on, this is cedar. Cedar kind of burns like gasoline. Is it sucks the air in here and um, makes it so it's like you're blowing on it almost. So we're gonna let that get going. Meanwhile, I'll set up the rest of this tent. All right, so the stove's going. I got my air mattress being kind of slowly blown up by itself. I got two sleeping bags here. One sleeping bag zips inside of the other one. I think one is considered one is rated at zero, and then the other over bag takes it to minus 40. It's not going to get that cold tonight, so I'll probably actually just let the fire even burn out. So. 
and sleeping bags when they're compressed they lose their they lose their insulation back in so you want to get your sleeping bags out and let them start getting puffed up so i'm going to do that now and it's still dry over here so i'm just going to put it over there and let it start getting its r value back Bonus, I got insulated booties. They're looking high on the hog here. Okay, so this is how that sleeping bag works. This is there's one sleeping bag there. Here's the second one. They zip together, and then the whole thing zips up like that. And so it's actually a bag inside of a bag. Um, and so we got that all put on there Got that all put together That's gonna get nice and toasty warm. I got My totes underneath my cot Other stuff here You can see that's going well. So we're gonna go, go out tonight for dinner I'm gonna keep it simple inside here. I'm just gonna have hot dogs and I'll put them inside that stove Which will be kind of fun. All right, since I can't get steaks pounded in I at least wanted to tie this rain fly down and that way if the wind blows it won't blow it away so you can see i got two guy wires to my sled here in the front i got about half a tote of wood there i got a tote of wood in the back i got a little guy wire heading back to it fog's moved in it's kind of ugly it's supposed to be clear tomorrow you'd never know it from this and then I tied this just to my snow machine. Fog rolled in last night. Don't know that you can see anything here. Pretty grainy it looks like. One of the simple pleasures of camping is a little coffee first thing in the morning. And so a while ago I got this little coffee pot. He's a cute little devil. I've used it like one time when I took it on, and I haven't used it since. This is a percolator coffee maker. There, and then we're going to put the stem in there. And what happens is water boils underneath here. This sits on the bottom. Water boils underneath here. When it boils, it expands. It goes up here, and it pops out the top. And I'm going to put that in there just like that right now. And then on top of that, there's a diffuser that you put coffee grounds in and it's got a diffuser on the top then. And so the water comes up, lands on this and goes through it. Um, I have put this in there before and then tried to put coffee in it, but when you open it up, water shooting out the top and you're trying to dump coffee in. So I've decided that the smarter thing, and I'll bet this is how people used to do it. You put coffee in here, you put it off to the side, you wait till it's ready, you open that up, you drop this on the stem, you close it. Much smarter. There. I'll put this on there. I'm going to set this off to the side till that boils. The problem that I have is it's only like, I don't know, eight degrees outside right now. And this tent is comfortable, relatively speaking. 
And so if I heat this up more, and I heat it up by opening this, and it won't take long, you'll hear it start rolling here. Then it's gonna to get too hot in here, so I'm gonna to have to open up a window, so it's kind of that balance and counterbalance kind of thing. You can already hear it going. So it didn't take long, it was just on the edge of ripping. And so now it's gonna start ripping here. Probably take 10 or 15 minutes for that water boil. We'll check it in a bit. It's kind of dark in here probably for the GoPro. So I got my headlamp on, so hopefully we can see a little bit. Oop, that's too hot. I'm going to put it here on the front. Most of the heat is toward the back of the stove. It's still hot here, obviously, but you can tell it's perking a lot slower here. And so I'll leave it here so it doesn't get so strong that a sailor wouldn't drink it, by golly. So I think this morning my plan is going to be I'm going to put a little bit more wood in this stove, turn it down, have a couple cups of coffee before I start. Um, and then I think I'm going to go out and just have a little look around. One of the things that I want to do on this trip is I'm trying to do a little recon for the Iditarod and the Iron Dog. Recon so that I can set up my camp where I'm really close to the trail so I can watch from there. Um, I'd hope to use the same place that I had last year. And it turns out that the place I had last year, either the river has taken that bank away or I was camping on a 15 foot snow drift that had been packed down. Could be the one actually. Um, I'm pretty much in the spot I was last year and the trail is quite a ways away from where my camp is right now. And there's not a bank that overlooks the trail. Last year there was a bank that kind of came up and I could camp here and the trail was right below it. And so they'd go right below me. So I need to look for a spot that's similar to that setup because I want to be able to, I want to be able to put up my tent and then just sit in front of my tent and watch them go by real close. So I can do a little recon. It's still quite a bit early, um, but the trail probably won't change a bunch. They've staked it already. So as we go along, you'll see their stakes on the trail. And so the trail will remain the same, so it's just a matter of finding a camping spot that is um, conducive to what I want to see. So in the meanwhile, I'm going to have a couple of moose hunter sticks for a pseudo breakfast, and then I'll come back and make a nice meal later on. Beautiful morning. So it's about 10 a.m. right now. And as we'll be able to see, the sun is still not up.
What a gorgeous day. Well, we're gonna see if this snow machine will start, and I'm sure it will. It starts every time, but I shouldn't say that, right? Unsecure my tent here, right? There we go. Okay, so it looks kind of cold, doesn't it? So that is a snow machine key. It plugs onto that. Over here, there's a kill switch. And this side is the starter. and then head out for a ride this morning. What a gorgeous day though. I'm sure this doesn't do it justice. Absolutely gorgeous day. See my camp is right there. I've only went about 100 yards. I'll let's take a look at the sunrise. Look, the sun's just getting ready to peek up over the horizon. And now we're on the trail. This is the I did ride trail again. Um, still cruise up here for a little bit. I'm looking for a couple different things. Number one, I'm looking for a camp spot. So realistically. Beside the trail though. That's kind of what I want. Um, so that that's a possibility. So it's just probably 200 yards down from my camp where I'm at right now. It's close to where I was last year. Um, but we'll look for a couple other things. Number one's a good camp spot. And the other, I really want to have a bonfire when I come out here. And so I'm looking for easy wood for a bonfire. So we'll see if we can find some of that. some really good firewood if nobody else gets that so we're probably about four miles beyond my camp what a fantastic day to be out on the trail we found some firewood that i'm interested in and uh, so i'm going to go ahead and head back to camp but on the way i'm going to show you a little bit of trail there's some the sun's just coming up it's really pretty so we'll look at a little trail on the way It's 11.15, the sun still hasn't hit my camp. 
Maybe I should have camped on the other side of the river. You can see it's coming up there though. It's gonna clear the trees here pretty soon. I stoked the stove up before I left and you can see it's still going, that's nice. So I never cook in my tent. Um, and the reason is because I don't want it to smell like food. I'll be out in this tent when the bears are out. Right now they're denned up, at least they should be. Um, and so I'm gonna move my stove outside and go ahead and cook something. And so I got a cap here that I'll put on that. There. We'll get the stove pipe out of here, hopefully. Then I've designed this, this stove so that I can clear it out when it's hot with these chains. So I started taking my camp down, brought my stove outside, already breakfast here. These guys are packing it out. So I kind of prepped that at home. Some butter, potatoes, onion, peppers in there. Think we'll get that going. Okay, so this is moose tenderloin. Undoubtedly the finest cut of any animal. Tenderloin. See that? It's kind of cold out here, so it's tough to see. We got potatoes on this side, and that's cooking on the other side. That won't take long. We'll be eating. Well, I got everything picked up, packed up, and ready to go. Got a little coffee there still. Um, what a fabulous day. It's already about two o'clock in the afternoon, so it's going to start getting dark here pretty soon. That again, we're beyond the apex of the sun. It's starting to set already. Um, so we don't have too terribly long to get back to the truck, get everything loaded into the truck and hit the road. This is an area that clearly we're in the middle of a river and see how mobile it is. So I think this froze, the ice broke up and flowed down through here. up and you can see right here it's a big chunk of river ice several inches thick and so the obviously the river had iced up thawed out and then um refroze but it's just a mogul pit out there there's another place where you can see wow there was probably eight inches of ice there that broke up that must be a pressure ridge. See how it's just one ridge going across there? And so, you know, obviously two things came together and pushed that up. Kind of like plate tectonics a little bit. Interesting. So here's the trail. A lot of smooth open water. You can see it kind of steaming there. Well, that was a fun adventure. Um, I learned a little bit about the trail today. I think I've narrowed down a place where I'm gonna camp. Um, so don't forget to subscribe so that hopefully you'll be able to catch that trip 
out for the Iditarod um, and for the Iron Dog as well. And so, um, again, we'll see you on the trail. <laughs>